Hello, my name is Debbie Blessing, and I'm the Geriatric Workforce Enhancement Coordinator at A.T. Still University, Kirksville College of Osteopathic Medicine in the Area Health Education Center's program office. Today, I'll be talking about cognitive stimulation therapy, making a difference for residents with mild to moderate dementia in long-term care. My disclosure is I receive funding from the Geriatric Workforce Enhancement Program, which is funded by the Health Resources and Services Administration. So let's begin our discussion today about talk at defining what is dementia. So dementia is a general term, an overall or umbrella term, if you will, used to describe signs and symptoms related to changes that are occurring in the brain. And um, it interferes with one's functional ability to complete everyday activities. These changes vary, may vary from person to person. We know that dementia is progressive and that there's currently no cure. And I'm sure you've all heard the saying, if you've worked with one person with dementia, you've worked with one person with dementia. There are also some reversible causes for dementia. So it's important to also examine what some of those might be. And then going over symptoms of dementia. So that includes memory loss, difficulty concentrating, poor judgment, behavioral changes, which can include mood, changes in mood, such as depression, anxiety, uh, inability like to control imp um, impulse control, and then difficulty in managing financial affairs or money, changes in speech. That can include difficulty with words, writing them or speaking them, understanding speech from others, uh, numbers, gestures, and then ultimately the most important part here is that dementia is not a normal part of our aging. And I think it's helpful to have a basic understanding of what dementia is um, as we look at defining what is cognitive stimulation therapy and how it has been shown to improve memory and quality of life for those living with dementia who participate in group and individual sessions. So we call um, cognitive stimulation therapy CST. So it's an evidence-based group intervention for persons with mild to moderate dementia. Uh, CST provides guidelines for small theme-based group or individual sessions that really are aimed at stimulating and engaging the participants while providing an optimal learning environment where it's stress-free and then the social benefits of being in a group or participating in a one-on-one -on -one interaction. And then the key aims are to improve cognitive functioning and by using a variety of techniques that techniques that exercise different cognitive skills, such as um, executive functioning tasks, uh, multi-sensory stimulation, reminiscence as an aid to orientation. So how did CST come about? So because we have a short time frame, we're gonna start in the mid 1990s where interest in positive non-drug or psychological approaches to dementia were, um, were developing, were growing. And then there were also promising drug trials with very rigorous methodologies such as the TACRIN study. So in 1996, Dr. Martin Orell and Dr. Bob Woods from London addressed a call for proposal to evaluate psychological therapies. And they wrote this editorial. And the key points in this editorial were that psychological therapies really could be a serious competitor to medications. And that currently low quality methodologies of study evaluated these um, psychological approaches. And that they needed standard and sensitive instruments of measurements um, to evaluate a range of outcomes and then to compare to drug trials. And then ultimately uh, funding bodies needed to be encouraged um, to encourage large scale, robust multi-site um, studies that also had a cost benefit analysis. Ultimately, as a result of this editorial, Orell and Woods secured funding to develop a psychological therapy package for dementia that we now know as CST. So how was it developed? It was developed through a systematic review of literature, so a Cochrane review, and then ultimately a pilot study. And through this um, literature review, the researchers took the most effective elements from different psychological therapies to develop the CST program. So reality orientation. So that's the presentation and repetition of information. Reminiscence therapy, the one that we're probably the most familiar with and um, comfortable with because we're talking about memories from the past, 
the memories that are most intact because our long-term memory is often the last to go um, because that's in the latter stages of dementia. Validation therapy. So um, recognizing that a person's emotions are not right or wrong, but they're very real. Um, and then multisensory stimulation. So it has been suggested that by um, engaging multiple senses that uh, there is a great chance that learning is taking place. So using multisensory stimulation like snoozing in rooms, aromatherapy, light therapy. So what's the impact that CST has had? So the National Institute for Clinical and Health and Clinical Excellence, which is in the UK, recognizes CST as having the best practice. And so anyone in the UK who receives a diagnosis for mild to moderate dementia, um, is, it is suggested that they be referred to a CST group or individual session. The Alzheimer's Disease International recognizes CST as having the best evidence for improving memory. And CST has ultimately been culturally adapted in 36 different countries. So any of the blue countries have adapted CST. And then there are four manuals to help in, um, in four manuals for CST. How do we think CST works? So it's based on that premise of use it or lose it. Our brain is just like any other part of our body. If we don't exercise it, it's not going to work as well. So taking part in mentally stimulating activities that uh, will strengthen and create new neuronal connections. So it's that neuroplasticity. Um, complexity, novelty, and diversity is required for these cognitive gains. And you'll see that later on where we talk about the difference in the sessions and um, the complexity that goes on through each of these sessions. The impact on memory, so our short-term memory. So how many pieces of information can you hold on to in a short period of time? We know that information typically comes through the auditory and visual systems. And then our long-term memory. If we place a value on that information from the short-term memory, it will move to our long-term memory. And intensity is, um, helps that information to stick. And we're gonna talk about um, why intensity is important um, when we uh, talk about session structure. And then the working memory taking information from our short-term memory and our long-term memory and assimilating and manipulating it. So that is the basis for higher executive functioning. And so one of our colleagues from Perry County um, Hospital, she always refers to this process as turning on the lights. And then positive reinforcement. So our questions are opinion-based questions that so we're not asking factual questions. We're not asking the participant, do you remember? So thinking and how we interact um, with the objects. So we try to be very opinion-based even with the objects that we're working with. Uh, the social environment is very positive and stimulating. The participants are having fun, they're enjoying themselves, they don't feel like they're learning or that they're in a classroom, and they are in a group where other people are experiencing many of the same things that they are um, because of their dementia. And so there's that sense of belonging. They become very close-knit. It improves overall self-esteem and confidence. And that we know when we have improvements in cognition, we have improvements in self-reported quality of life. So who benefits most? So we know those with the higher cognitive and brain reserve that respond better to CST. People who are 80 years and of age and older and then females, we know that it's typically about a four to one male or female to male ratio with CST groups. And then why um, 80 years and older? And so the hypothesis is, is that the older, older adults have longer and more prolonged periods uh, where they are not being cognitively stimulated, we're not, they're not receiving that mental stimulation, uh, more so than the younger old, so there's more room for improvement. And then the benefits of CST are in addition to any benefit uh, of anti-dementia medication. These are just some common goals for all of the sessions, orientation to time, place, and person, increasing um, attention and concentration, elevating mood, promoting social awareness, creating and promoting new ideas, thoughts, and associations, and then creating new learning. The key features of the CST program include 14 sessions, usually twice a week for seven weeks. Approximately each session is one hour in length. We add exercise to our sessions, so sometimes they do go over that hour. It's ideally a group of five to eight people um, run by two facilitators. Each session has a choice of activities to cater to the interest and the abilities of group members. 
Um, we want to make sure that the group members um, ideally are at a similar stage so that activities can be pitched appropriately. And then paying attention to the gender mix. We know through some of the studies that um, the female dominated groups are driven by conversation where those male dominated groups tend to be driven by um, hands on or doing activities. So making sure you're paying attention and offering something for both. These are the CST session themes. You can see that none of them are the same. We focus on something different every time. So this is where that novelty and diversity comes through. Um, each session as we progress gets a little bit more difficult. So that's where the complexity is. Uh, we can also add complexity whether we're using level A or level B, just depending on um, the abilities of your group members. So the session structure includes an introduction. This is where we orient members to the beginning of the group. We all wear a name tag, so there's no pressure to remember names. We have a, um, the group members have a uh, name for their group. There's a softball toss. There's a reality orientation board that has a reference to the group name, the group song, a reference to the activities, the day, the weather, and the season. And then they also choose a song at the beginning um, and they sing that at the beginning and end of each session. It's just a small or short chorus or song. Current affairs, it's my favorite part of CST. This is where we pull um, articles from local and national sources. We use human interest stories because those are always a crowd pleaser. We don't shy away from controversial topics. Going back to that um, discussion about long-term memory, we know that intensity is needed to take information from uh, short-term memory and place it in our long-term memory. And so not that it's a bad thing, but um, we know when the participants have a strong feeling or an interest, or maybe it's an experience or knowledge that they have, they want to share that. So that's the level intensity, the intensity that we're talking about. Each session has a level A and B. The sessions are open to manipulation. So you have the freedom to enrich them by integrating music, um, sensory stimulation. We know the more senses we engage, that um, the greater chance that the individual is learning and they'll be able to take that um, information from short-term memory to long-term memory. Who should be included? So meeting the criteria of mild to moderate dementia, we use the St. Louis mental status exam um, to determine this. Can she or he have a meaningful conversation? CST is very conversation driven. So this would be very important. Can she or she or he hear well enough to participate in small group discussion? Is his or her vision good enough to see most pictures? We have a picture or a prop in every session. Is she or he likely to remain in group the entire session? If all of these questions um, are an, a yes, are answered with a yes, then that person might be good to include in a group. If no, there um, should definitely be further discussion of, is there a group that might be better or would individual CST be a better option? Here are some additional resources for cognitive stimulation therapy. And then if you wanna learn more about improving healthcare outcomes for PAC and long-term care patients, uh, join the collaboration through the next ECHO. Thank you very much.